Hey everybody, George Williams Sr. here. Hey, I thought I'd show you something a little bit different today. I'm going to show you some of my drawings. I'm going to start out with some of my ink drawings. These are my pen and inks. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, you know, I like to draw dinosaurs. A lot of people get stuck with uh, making it anatomically correct and arguing about what paleontologists think is the best and the latest and the greatest new theory. But, you know, when you're drawing and you're drawing for yourself, make them any way you want. You know, you got to follow the bone structures to a greater degree. But none of us really know what they look like on the outside. So don't sweat yourself with that. Just have fun with it. <clears throat> this is uh, one of my favorite drawings. It's of a uh, Allosaurus and Triceratops with the Triceratops baby in there. And, uh, you know, just have fun with it. I'm going to try and zoom in closer here and show you guys some stuff without trying to get out of focus. This is basically just a line drawing with cross hatching. And you can make it as detailed or as little detailed as you want. And it's always fun to put a little extra in there like the baby triceratops and frogs jumping out of the way, footprints in the mud, and swirly water. And you can be realistic, stylized, or whatever way you want to do it. But there's one. It's hard to keep the cell phone in focus, so let's go to another one. So along the same lines with that same drawing, you know, you can turn around and you can storyboard it. So here's a storyboard of the actions. You got your Allosaurus there, and the fight ensues. Then you come down here, and Triceratops is biting the guy in the leg, and he's roaring. All right, let's check out another drawing. This one is done a little simpler, and you can see the theropod coming in after the stegosaurus, and the stegosaurus is guarding her little hatchlings there. A lot of line work, a lot of cross hatching, and just enjoy it while you create it. Don't worry about mistakes, just let it all happen. This was a fun one here, doing this uh, T-Rex. Try to get the glare off of it. And um, anyway, and always in my drawings, I like to put little things that are kind of fun. You know, right over here, you can see the flying reptile taking off as a T-Rex coming through the jungle. And hidden way over here on the tree is a little gecko. All parts that make the picture interesting. And the T-Rex looks like he's sniffing around for something, so I put a little sauropod baby hiding down there in the trees. And then, you know, if you want to practice your anatomical stuff, you can sketch the bones out and uh, do a little, try to do a little more scientific drawings. Here's an example of trying to be a little more scientific, but yet preserving my creative artistic license. Looking at that Tyrannosaurus Rex there versus the Albertosaurus skull there. Just have fun with it. It's a lot of fun. This one I had a lot of fun with. I don't usually use a ruler. I usually freehand everything that I do. But I used a ruler on this to create the light coming through the water with this megalodon and this plesiosaur. So it, it was a lot of fun. Have it swimming around in there. Another thing you can do while you're drawing is you can detail your stuff up close that you want your focus to be on and then as you go farther away you can basically do a lot of line work 
and that gives it a feeling of distance. So you can see the uh, sauropods marching along, the diplodocus marching along over there on the other side, and this T-Rex and his young T-Rex sitting there watching them. This was one of my favorite drawings that I've done in quite a while. I did this one in 2018. And I started playing with my ground litter, you know, trying to make the ground look more detailed with leaves and sticks and stuff. And the cool part is, <clears throat> the cool part is, is that you don't have to get really detailed with your, with your drawing. You just create the illusion of detail by creating positive and negative aspects. And this was this egg thief coming in, breaking up the nest, and then the mother dinosaur coming in and defending the nest. But this was a lot of fun. And when you're drawing, you don't have to go all out on the detail and stuff. I mean, here you can see this mosasaur type dinosaur swimming through and I just blacked out the bottom and created some light work stylized light work for the surface tension and and the distance and it created a fun little little piece that way and finally here's a good example of these tyrannosaurus heard running they're either running or chasing something, whatever your imagination is, running across an open desert-type plain with some mesas in the background and big cumulus clouds. And one thing you can do when you're drawing, especially with pen and ink, is vary the thickness of your line work. So you can see the line work in the background with the mountains is pretty thin, and then I wanted to highlight the clouds, so I made theirs... Uh, the cloud lines thicker and alternating in thickness. Also with the dinosaurs, you know, the, what you want to emphasize, you can thicken up the line work or thin it out and create as much detail or as little detail as you want. The fun thing is, is to create enough detail to allow the person's mind in his mind's eye to fill in the blanks and create the action. All right, this is George Williams Sr. sharing you a little bit of my pen and ink work, something different than what I've showed you before. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have fun. Keep hobbying. Keep drawing. Whatever your hobby is, don't let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't be doing or how to be creative or not be creative. Just do your stuff. Have fun with it. That's all that matters. So George Williams Sr. signing off. Catch you on the next vid.